Hey everyone, I'm John Bozek with Electric Bike Report, and in this video we'll be going over this big, bright blue beauty, the Troxxas Explorer. Fat tire e-bikes have exploded in popularity in recent years, and there's certainly no shortage of them on the market. I see riders of all shapes, ages, and sizes enjoying saddle time on our local bike paths, and I'd say at least a third of them are pedaling around on fat tire models like the Troxxas Explorer here. That's no surprise though, since e-bikes like this are often fast, tough, and hugely capable in a variety of environments. With a powerful 750 watt rear hub motor, big knobby tires for good traction on paved roads or loose dirt, a front suspension fork to soften bumps, and a rear cargo rack for hauling all sorts of gear, the Explorer definitely checks all the big boxes here. So aside from its baseline specs and this eye-catching paint job, what makes this bike stand out from the crowd? To find out, stay tuned while we dive into the Explorer's components and then see how it performed in our testing. Before we get started, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. This helps support the channel and makes it easier for you to see more of our content when we upload new videos. We're always talking about awesome e-bikes like the Explorer here, and we'd love to help you find the one that's just right for you. As a Class 3 e-bike, the Troxxas Explorer is capable of pedal-assisted speeds of up to 28 miles per hour, and it also has a throttle that will carry you up to 20. We've noticed that it seems to be less common for e-bikes to ship with class three settings these days. Many similar e-bikes we've tested have to be adjusted through an app or unlocked with a secret cheat code to go that fast. The Explorer gives you access to those top speeds right out of the box, although it does offer the ability to change or limit its speed with a few button presses on its control panel in case there are speed restrictions in the areas you wanna ride. The bike's class three capabilities make pedaling around at top speed tons of fun and something I definitely recommend doing. We've seen some e-bikes that struggle to reach or maintain 28 miles per hour, but the Explorer can do both without breaking a sweat. It also surprised us with its uphill capabilities, especially when using pedal assist, but we'll talk more about that in our hill test section soon. The Explorer is super responsive for a bike with a rear hub motor and a cadence sensor. These are generally considered less responsive than torque sensors, and we have seen those showing up more regularly on e-bikes in this price range, but the cadence sensor here is really top-notch. It triggers motor assistance with just a quarter turn of the cranks and picks back up again super quickly after you coast or hit the brakes. So this in combination with the bike's front suspension and fat tires, do give it the ability to handle some off-road riding pretty well, although it's good to keep in mind that this is definitely not an all-terrain e-bike, and it's still going to feel a little stiff without a rear suspension. The bike comes in a high step frame like the one we have here, as well as a step-through version that's gonna be a bit easier to hop on and off of. There are three color options split between the two models, including a pretty standard black paint job on both styles this nice blue on the high step version, and in the step through frame, a bright and bold red. We have to acknowledge that the Explorer has a slightly higher price tag than we often see on similarly spec models, but where others might use completely unbranded parts or components from brands with less reliable track records to save on costs, almost all the major parts included here are from big hitters in the e-bike world. This means that on the whole, you're getting what you pay for in terms of reliability and long-term performance. Let's dive in a bit deeper to all those components and then we'll move on to see how the Explorer performed in our tests later on. I think it's fair to say that motor power and battery capacity are two of the biggest factors that potential fat tire e-bike riders or are gonna be looking for, and the Explorer definitely covers all the bases there. The bike's motor is a 48 volt, 750 watt rear hub motor that's made by Bafung with 80 newton meters of torque. This is a powerful motor from a good brand that's also very appropriate for a bike of this size. 
The fully integrated battery on the underside of the down tube is a pretty massive 48 volt, 960 watt hour unit with Samsung cells. We don't often see batteries with this great of a capacity, so we expected a lot from the bike's performance in our range test. We'll save that for later in the review though. Of course, there are the bike's tires to talk about. These are super knobby 26 inch by four inch Kenda tires. They did great on pavement, a pretty solid job of tearing through loose dirt and sand, and they also help the bike feel super stable when it's on the move. Moving on, we have a Shimano Acera eight-speed drivetrain with a 12 to 32 tooth cassette and a 46 tooth chain ring. It also uses a nice KMC chain. For brakes, the Explorer has Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. The bike's web page states that it comes with 180 millimeter rotors, but interestingly, our test bike actually came with 203 millimeter rotors. Our bike also had a Uding front suspension fork, which is really one of the only parts that stood out as not being a name brand. That said, it felt nice and squishy and it did perform pretty well for us. The bike has a bunch of features we commonly see on commuter e-bikes like the rear cargo rack, full coverage fenders and lights. The headlight is a little small. I expected something more substantial on this big frame, but it is fairly bright for its size. The bike's tail lights are on its seat stays and they function as flashing brake lights when you pull the brake levers. The rear cargo rack has a 55 pound weight capacity, so that gives you the ability to haul a pretty decent amount of gear with you out on your adventures. That's a little bit more than a checked bag at the airport, which is nothing to sneeze at. The saddle is a custom Troxxas model that I thought was pretty comfortable overall, although personally I'd probably swap it out for something with a slightly different shape. If we move up to the cockpit, there's the bike's black and white LCD display. This is pretty well organized and easy to read, but it feels a little dated, and on a bike that sells for more than $2,000, we think it would be great to see a full color unit in the future. I'm taking a bit of a tangent here, but it's also becoming more common for sub $2,000 e-bikes to pair with an app with GPS, ride data tracking, quick class two to class three adjustment, or vice versa, and more. So we think this would be a nice feature for Troxxas to work on developing too. Back on track though, I really liked the textured rubber grips as well as the handlebar width. There's the bike's throttle lever and control pad on the left handlebar. The button pad here is nothing new, but I do like it. It's simple, but it gives quick access to the lights and the central information button allows you to easily adjust the bike's top speed as long as you're stopped. On the right bar, we've got the Shimano trigger shifter. Again, this is a really nice feature that fits the bike really well. I think that covers just about everything, so let's move on to the Explorer's actual performance results. With the speeds at which e-bikes are capable of traveling, it's crucial that they have effective brakes. To test brake systems, we pedal every e-bike we test up to 20 miles per hour, and then hit the brakes to stop as quickly as we can while still maintaining control. We measure the distance it takes the bike to stop, then repeat the process two more times, and this allows us to calculate an average stopping distance from those results. The Explorer's Tektro hydraulic disc brakes did pretty well, giving the bike an average stopping distance of 21 feet 7 inches. If we compare this to other fat tire e-bikes we've tested, this is a little on the slower side, but it is definitely not a bad result. These brakes are solid, but they did have their work cut out for them in the test. The bike itself weighs 83 pounds and our rider is about 230. So with that combination of factors, it's good to see that our bike came with those larger rotors. We think the Explorer did pretty well, although with the advertised 180 millimeter rotors, these results would likely be a bit worse. Either way though, the bike's weight helps it to feel super stable when braking, which is always something we really appreciate. For our circuit test, we pedal every e-bike that we test around a one mile loop made up of four right turns and a small 30 foot hill. We do this first with no assistance from the motor and then again in each pedal assist setting. This gives us an idea of the bike's motor engagement, its handling and its speeds at different PAS settings. As with most fat tire e-bikes, the Explorer is fairly tough to pedal around without motor assistance. That 83 pounds I mentioned earlier really comes into play when you're the one doing all the work. So just be sure your bike is fully charged when you're heading out for a ride and keep an eye on that battery level so you're not caught far from home 
if it dies. I actually got a bit of a chuckle when looking at our circuit test data for the Explorer because our speed in PAS1 was slightly lower than it was with no motor assistance. My first thought was that our rider for this test most likely just got a bit tuckered out after that first lap, and I laughed because I've definitely been there. There may have been another factor playing into that result though, and that is the combination of the Explorer's cadence sensor and pedal assist system. As is common with e-bikes of this type, the pedal assist system limits the motor to different top speeds within each setting. In this case, the motor assistance in PAS1 tops out at 10 miles per hour and goes up from there, but the rider can choose to pedal harder if they want. So our tester may have also just been relaxing naturally into the bike's top speed for that setting. The Explorer's webpage shows its top speed at PAS2 to be 15 miles per hour, which lines up exactly with our data, and then climbing from there to 20, then 23, and finally the class three maximum of 28 in PAS5. Our data matches that distribution pretty well, and our course has some elevation changes and turns, so I was pretty happy to see such a close correlation there. On top of that, I think the Explorer's pedal assist system does a really nice job of distributing power and top speed between its five settings. I mentioned earlier that I liked the width of the bike's handlebars, and that's because they offer a good balance of comfort and control. In terms of handling, the Explorer does feel its size though. The bike wants to take turns a bit wide, but its four inch tires do allow you to lean into curves to compensate some for that. And they also just give the bike a nice stable ride. Our range test is actually two separate trials where we pedal the bike until its battery runs out. The first test is done in the lowest pedal assist setting that provides constant input from the motor. And the second is done with maximum assistance. For each test, we measured the distance the bike was able to travel, and we compare that to the range advertised by the bike's manufacturer. Considering the Explorer's gigantic Samsung 960 watt hour battery, we had pretty high expectations for the bike in this test. Troxxas claims a range of 30 to 62 miles, and our testing supported that pretty well. We traveled 24.7 miles with the bike in its max assist setting, which is a little below the claimed range, but still pretty decent for an e-bike going 28 miles per hour. In PAS1, however, the bike took us an even 72 miles, which exceeds the distance Troxxas claims, uh, but also lines up pretty well with our expectations. When we hit right around 24 miles per hour, we did notice that the bike had a bit of a tendency to ghost pedal as it approached the top end of its capabilities. This wasn't a huge problem as it's not uncommon among similar e-bikes, but it did seem to be a bit more pronounced here. We noticed the Explorer's 46 tooth chain ring was also a little smaller than the 48 tooth component we've seen on similar e-bikes. So we think bumping up a step to that slightly larger chain ring might help to reduce that ghost pedaling effect without making too much of a dif difference at lower speeds or on hills. One thing I really liked about the Explorer though was that it felt more like a non-electric bike in PAS1. It's pretty common for this setting to just basically take the weight of the bike away and that definitely applies here. So if you're comfortable with the workout you can get in PAS1, you can go a pretty serious distance without having to recharge the bike. But with such a large battery, I think our test results show that you can also bump up your pedal assist level for an easier, more exhilarating ride and you still won't have to worry too much about running out of juice. There's a lot of flexibility here with whatever sort of ride experience you're looking for. And with the data we gathered, I think the Explorer really lives up to its name. To test every bike's hill climbing ability, we take them to a local hill called Hell Hole, which is a steep but paved path that's a third of a mile long with an average grade of 12%. This is a pretty serious challenge for most e-bikes and some don't make it all the way to the top. We do this test both in the max pedal assist setting and with just the throttle to see if a bike has what it takes to make the climb. On throttle alone, the Explorer cruised to the top in a minute and 27 seconds with an average speed of 12.5 miles per hour. This isn't a hugely remarkable result when compared to results we've seen from similar e-bikes, 
but we also aren't disappointed. It's not uncommon for results in this portion of our test to be a bit on the slower side, and the Explorer definitely made up for it on this second trip up the hill. When pedaling in PAS5, the bike conquered hellhole in a minute and seven seconds with an average speed of 16.2 miles per hour, which is an excellent result. It doesn't quite break any records, but it does mean that the Explorer has no trouble keeping pace with its peers, and it even leaves some of them pretty far behind. I think the Explorer performed its best outside of our hill test, though. I usually take every bike I ride to a small but steep hill a bit closer to the office, and I run it up in every PAS setting, sort of in the same way that we perform our circuit tests. On most of the e-bikes I've tested, it's pretty common to have to bump them up into PAS 3 or 4 to really get the full benefit of their motor power when going uphill, but the Explorer did an incredible job of climbing even in PAS 1. It didn't break any speed records, but the ride was remarkably comfortable, I didn't have to downshift much, and the motor didn't seem strained in the slightest. That's something I haven't encountered very often, and in my mind it really makes the Explorer stand out. Between our official results and my own experimentation, I feel confident in saying that the Explorer can handle just about anything. And with its ability to climb hills confidently in every pedal assist setting, this means that you can set the bike to whatever speed you like, and you don't need to worry about switching out of it if you encounter a more difficult incline on your travels. The Troxxas Explorer proved itself to be quite capable in our testing. The bike is fast thanks to its strong motor, it's responsive with a good cadence sensor, it brakes pretty well, it feels super stable, and when you're pedaling, it climbs hills like a boss. We do think it would be nice to see a full color display included on the Explorer in the future considering its price point, though the screen it currently uses is still quite functional and easy to read. Additionally, while we are very happy with the bike's ability to hit, aim, and maintain the class three limit of 28 miles per hour, bumping up the size of the bike's chain ring slightly would likely help with the ghost pedaling we experienced at speeds above 24. Performance-wise, the Explorer might not break any new ground, but it does its job very well, and it's awesome to see so many name brand components with a good track record included on the bike. On top of that, it's comfortable to ride, it's got a nice amount of flexibility in its user experience through its pedal assist system, and you can't deny that that paint job just pops. I think the Explorer is gonna be a great option for anyone who wants flexibility, maybe for those who want a big bike that's gonna feel stable and stand out on the road when riding to work or school, but also something that's gonna perform very well and allow you to go adventuring freely on the weekends. The Explorer has the basics to get you moving fast, the extras to help you carry cargo and stay safer on the road, and the range to get you where you need to go and beyond. Thanks for sticking with me this far. If you'd like to read more about our experiences on the bike, please check out the link to our written review in the video description. You'll also find a link to the Troxxas website where you can check current pricing on the Explorer and pick one up for yourself. Before we go, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help us to grow and share more content. We'd love to hear from you in the comments section too, so let us know if you have any questions and what you thought about our review. That's all for today. Again, I'm John with Electric Bike Report, and this is the Troxxas Explorer.